So hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Assetto Corsa Competizione video or another ACC video as I'll probably start calling them now. Anyway, today's video all about tyres. Uh, tyres and track uh, temperature. Um, a massive, massive uh, video I've got to be honest. There's so much packed into this video. As I mentioned before as well um, about the adverts in the video, it's purely to in increase the revenue of each video really, just because the, the low viewership uh, of the channel, just to try and give me a little bit of a, a booster for each video that's produced. They do take quite a long time to put together these videos and I just hope you are bear with the adverts here and there. Anyway, the whole reason behind the video uh, was to try and come to a circuit and just have the right tyre pressures for the track conditions. Um, it always seems to be, I come to, a, a, to do a track and the tyres are always off and you're running a couple of laps to try and get an idea of what the tyre pressures should be. And sometimes you're fighting a losing battle because you've only got a few minutes available left in the qualifying session to be able to get the tyres dialed in to where they really should be. Now, if everyone's seen Avis's channel, um, one of the developers, he'll go on and on about, I won't say go on and on, he's a really nice chap, um, but he'll go on and on about the tyre pressures being right at around 27.5 PSI. Now, for me, that's wrong. And I'll explain why it's wrong on a few um, areas. Now, the tyres are a very intricate part of this simulator and there's a heck of a lot going on behind the scenes. Now each tyre, um, it's sort of governed by five elements really. You get obviously the tyre contact on the surface of the tarmac and as the car goes around the corner you get the side loading which is um, lateral grip. Then you'll get the, the acceleration which is longitudinal drip which is propelling the car forward so that you've You've got that grip element pulling on the tarmac, so to speak, each time the tyre goes round. And then you've got slip, so it reaches the maximum lateral load. And then the tyre starts to have an abrasion uh, across the circuit. Then you've got the whole core of the wheel itself, which is um, a lot of the heat is generated by the brake disc. And then you've got the outer carcass of the tyre, uh, which is governed by things like camber, uh, toe settings, caster settings, and it's the initial like track temperature, the ambient temperature, which is affecting the external part of the tyre. So you'll see in some elements you'll get like a green tyre, and then on the outer edges um, on the graphic you get like a blue or a redding sensation or, or um, indication on the tyre to show that certain areas of the surface of the tyre are cold, but the central core is hot or you'll start to get uh, from like a really nice green coloured tyre it starts to go like a light green as the core of the tyre is really hotting up and obviously if you push the tyre too much it starts to go red and obviously as we go into the night session some tyres might start to cool. Now there's a heck of a lot we can do about this and there's a heck of a lot that's uh, going into it. As you can see in the background here I'm just setting a 147 uh, 0.6 around Monza and a lot of you will be thinking 147.6 that's quite a good lap and there's a lot going into the reasons behind it being a 147.6 so let's just uh, return to the garage and we'll have a look at the timetable here I've had a couple of runs initially just getting my eye in back to the game um, I must have put in about 100 laps here the other day um, over the past couple of days definitely uh, all in the pursuit to try and find what sort of tyre pressures we should be running. Now if we go back to the setup and um, I'll use this um, same setup that I'm using it doesn't really matter I'm not turning loads of laps but as you can see there's quite a variation in the tyre pressures um, the top right corner is 28.4. This is the least used tyre on this circuit and the most used tyre on the circuit 26.6. Now if we come back to start a lap 
and we look down at the graphic in the bottom right corner you'll see that the tyre with 28.4 there's like three segments to each tyre you've got the outer the inner tyre the outer tyre and yeah sorry the inner t the inside tyre the middle of the tyre and the outer tyre now when we started at 24 I'll just start it again um, return to garage and we'll just start again you can see that on the 28.4 tyre the center part of the tire is slightly higher than the other parts of the tire and then you look on the one next to it 27.1 and the inner tire is slightly lower again on all three other tires you'll see that the inside segment of the tire is much lower now that's because the tire isn't fully inflated it's slightly um, it's slightly too soft and as you could see, um, I'll just start it again. Return to the garage and start again. You'll see on the 28.4 tyre, as we get to around 21, 22, it starts to become a perfectly solid tyre. The centre segment starts to drop and it goes to a proper solid tyre, just there at 28.2. So we want to be looking at the correct tyre pressure in my humble opinion of just about 27, 27.8 to 28.2 is the perfect um, tyre pressure. You see it 27.8 and just as it starts to drop below that 27.7 and it's probably a few other fractions you start to get the tyre um, underinflated so you get overinflation and then underinflation and you can see as the, we get even colder and colder that center segment gets shorter and shorter now this is a massive it makes a massive difference it really does so yeah, it's definitely something you're going to want to think about especially as um, a race goes on into the night you might be starting during the day but as you start to progress into the night it was it'll be then that you want the tire pressures to be at the best so it's often better to start out the race with an overinflated tire because it will become a, a perfect tire as you go into the night races or as the temperature starts to drop something you really need to pay attention to now i'll just come out of this um, session completely and we'll just come to how i've set up um, this session and we'll set up an actual race session and um, I'll show you personally so in this section we've got the weather settings and I've gone to custom settings so that I can adjust this dynamic weather section now by disabling the dynamic weather it stops um, the influences of wind on the circuit so that you can really just get this down to a level so there is zero um, kilometers per hour wind when this is disabled cloud cover is at a normal but it's the ambient temperature that's going to make such a difference to the car's performance now remember this is a simulator guys on a console and it's simulating everything now in cooler conditions the air temperature or yeah the ambient air gets denser there's more oxygen particles uh, per I don't, I don't know square centimeter I've got no idea per what uh, but the more oxygen there is in the engine combustion chamber the more power is going to be produced so the colder the air temperature the more power there is and you'll notice this is a massive difference um, I'll probably get about 170 miles an hour along the straights at 10 degrees and by the time you reach track temperature it's probably about four degrees higher and this does vary quite a bit depending on how much cloud cover there is um, but as you start to increase upwards to around 20 degrees that that um, um, initial um, boost in performance will start to drop off now yesterday I was averaging um, around a 147.5 to 147.8 sort of lap times obviously you need to be nailing the lap to hit these lap times but a 148 was easy at 10 degrees 
Now as you increase that air temperature to 20 degrees within this section and then as you go to the circuit it'll be about uh, 26, 24 degrees something like that. Um, I, I was averaging around a 143, uh, 143 to 145 so I think there's an increase of about uh, 0.5 of a lap um, on the lap times so about five tenths of a second uh, per 10 degrees and obviously as you increase that to 30 degrees 36 degrees on track I was probably hitting around a 148.8 149s now 149s are quite respectable um, it's a, a quite a good time within any lobby to be hitting a 149 lap time but this is very much governed by the amount of um, ambient temperature and also the tyre pressures uh, something that I stumbled across quite a lot so if we start to drop the tyre pressure we'll I'll just enter a, a race here at this point <clears throat> so let's uh, go to one that I um, set up earlier so if we're starting at five o'clock at night it's a 20 minute session that I did um, and I think I've recorded this uh, last night actually uh, but I'll start it off just so that you can see uh, I might actually have it saved but the time multiplier is 25 and you'll see this 24 and you'll see this quite a lot in a lot of the um, online races that you go from day to night and predominantly most of the races in the evening so you really want to be setting the tyres up for later in the evening don't go for t setting the tyre pressures at a daytime temperature it's really a much higher temperature is what you're wanting and one of the thing I was trying to do during this session was find uh, a good skill level I tried it on a hundred percent and eighty percent aggression and I finished around 20 seconds behind uh, the leader so it's, he holds quite a good pace definitely in the 47s constantly um, so it's, I've just dropped that down to 90 to try again um, <clears throat> I'll just see if in the gallery it's saved I doubt it did do it didn't save so there we go um, so I can't look at that that's one thing out of the way so let's launch that session and um, I'll give you an idea I'll do a little bit of this race just to get give you an idea of what's what's actually happening so we'll we'll I'll increase this temperature um, to 20 degrees <clears throat> and we'll take a look at how it runs but definitely start thinking about how you're gonna um, use the tire pressure um, to your advantage as you go through each stage of the race really definitely for long sessions that are going to run through the night you need to be looking at the tyre pressures um, and just really something that I really wanted to get nailed really there was the tyre pressures so let's just come to this setup uh, and I'll just load a setup that I was using um, this practice setup uh, which was for the race so I've got 44 litres of fuel and that's one thing to bear in mind uh, when you're doing a race um, that's uh, 20 minutes long just remember that 20 minutes worth of fuel is about 40 litres but if the last driver um, crosses the finish line um, just as that 20 li 40 litres is finished you've still got another lap to do so always put an extra 3.6 or however many litres of fuel in just in case you need to do that extra lap at the end of the race. Um, I'll not go into the setup too much uh, but we will just have a look um, at the tyre pressures. So as I mentioned before, in fact I'll load up um, another tyre pressure that, that I had. Um, yeah this was the one so if we're looking at the tyre pressures now um, if we say for example the front right tyre and we'll stick on the front right tyre it's 28.4 degrees 28.4 psi now this is for when the track temperature is 10 degrees let's just move to the next one if we load up the session that I'm going to be doing now where it's at 24 degrees the, 
the temperature is now 20 the pressure is now 28.7 but I've set this as I go into the night really so I've, I'm sort of pushing it higher than it needs to be you can see there at 27 point 27 at the left rear tire <laughs> it's very hard to explain this it really is so at 10 degrees um, Say you've got, and I, I would suggest to do this, drive around the circuit with your tyres and get them to the temperatures that you want them. And I would say between 27.8 and 28.2 degrees, preferably 28, 28 PSI, sorry. So yeah, 27.8 to 28.2 PSI, 28 being the perfect number that you're aiming for. So you've got a little leeway either way. So do, do say four or five laps to get the tyres into the temperature around whatever circuit you're driving on with the tyre pressure, with the air temperature at 10, 10 degrees. So that'll be track temperature of around 14 degrees. Now, once you've got those tyre pressures, write them down, save them, bank them to memory or something like that. So every degree after that track temperature you will need to increase the tyre pressure or decrease the tyre pressure by 1, 0.1 psi or yeah 0.1 psi so let's say for example let's take this rear tyre if it's going to go to 20 degrees and this is 10 degrees tyre pressure the tyre is going to get hotter much quicker so if it was 10 degrees, it would be 27 PSI. If it was 20 degrees, I would drop the PSI by 10 points to 26 PSI. So for 26 degrees or 20 degrees, sorry, 26 PSI, it goes up another 10 degrees, 30, 30 degrees. We're gonna, we're gonna have to drop it another 10 points. So this would be the tyre pressure at 30 degrees and this would be my tyre pressure at 10 degrees. Let's say it's 20, 25 degrees, so you're going to want to drop it by 10 degrees plus the other five, if you get me. So for each degree of ambient temperature or air temperature, track temperature, you're going to need to increase or decrease the tyre pressure by 1, 1 or 0 0.1 psi. So as we said, this was at 27 PSI. Now I've set these tyre pressures to run into the session. So they're going to start off and they're going to get hotter because this is a tyre pressure for 10 degrees. Although you can see the track temperature is now 28 degrees. So this tyre is going to reach probably about 28.4 PSI pretty quickly. So let's just let's see how it goes. So I've had one, uh, one attempt already at doing this lap um, or this um, race, uh, but it didn't go particularly well. So we're going to have another go at it. Uh, I've just increased the um, AI a little bit just to get them a little bit more competitive. I was in the 149s, low 149s, and they were at a 151. So just want them to be a little bit more competitive. We've already looked over all this, um, so I'm going to install the same setup as I was using. I'm just going to increase this tyre pressure a tiny bit more from my previous run. Just seems to be dropping pressure, and this one as well. So 28 degrees track temperature, and hopefully that's going to drop um, as we progress through. And again, just warming. Put your foot on the brake pedal just to try and warm the inner core of the tyre as we start this lap. Just going to try and get some temperature into these brakes so that we've got some brakes when we get down to turn one. If you go to the different dashboard display you can see your brake temperatures and you see them increasing. It's definitely a, a graphic that's worth looking at. I could turn the lights on um, so that I know they're going to be on for the start of the race. One thing less to worry about. 
I'm not paying for the lights. Come on, let's have it. So I didn't quite get a jump on anyone at the start. But I'm definitely going to be going down the inside here. Looking for that 150 yard board so I know everyone's going to be breaking. And then just sort of following suit through this section really. Car alongside. Try and get a better run out of that corner. So you see the tyre pressures are going to start to look over inflated. He's just had to make a little adjustment there. Hopefully get up the inside of both of these. Just force him to go a little bit wide. Yes, nice one. <coughs> So like I said, I'm not, these tyre pressures are more for as we go through into the night shift. So you might look at them now and think, oh, they're totally overinflated. 29, and it is overinflated, but you'll see as the race progresses, we're going to spend more of the race uh, with the tyre in a window that I want it in. just using that inside curve just to drag you around that last corner really does help to get the car hooked up around that corner with the tyres slightly over inflated I'm going to get a much better um, top speed as well <coughs> so it helps us out initially while we've got cars to tow us Looking for the 150 yard board just before it. So I need to be looking at what sort of lap time these guys are setting. At 90% they were setting 151s. Just at the 100 yard board again, down, hold second gear through here. Using a bit of that curb. Quickly shift to third gear through here and try and hold third gear. Use some of this exit curb. And again, just manually shifting down to third. Like I said, when it's fat with fuel, the uh, Automatic gearbox has a tendency to drop an extra gear there. And see if I can get him into the braking zone here. Oh, definitely going to get this bit Bentley. So there we go, still far too easy at 95% if you ask me. 149.5 and they're still set in 151s, 152s. Just a little deep there, breaking a little bit too late. <coughs> So I'm hoping as uh, this video progresses and the temperature starts to drop you're going to see and notice a difference as the lap times start to come down. Obviously you've got the element of dealing with the darkness. Slightly wide on the exit, see all that time we lost. Just running wide. 
but it doesn't feel too bad with the tyres slightly overinflated at the moment. Still a slightly better uh, last sector. 19 degrees track temperature. So as much as the tyres initially got a little bit too overinflated, you can see now that they're starting to drop off again. And we're getting a tiny increase in performance as the air temperature starts to drop. Just took too much of that curve. Still a better exit, or a better first sector. And again, just braking at the 150 yard. Really heavy on the brake pedal. Just holding second gear through there and just keep squeezing the accelerator pedal. better exit than the previous lap. We should be into the 148s provided I don't stuff up the last section. So definitely don't want to hit that last exit curve. You used to be able to hit it in project cars too. Uh, but definitely don't want to do that in uh, ACC. Just a little tentative on the exit there. So into the 148s. <coughs> Track temperature is still 18 degrees. So you see I was just a little bit tentative on the brake pedal there, slow into the corner and that certainly shows in the lap time already, just having lost a, a tenth set to one. Felt like a better exit but no. You can see as it just drops down to second gear there, it just uh, ruins the exit really. It's something to be said for using a manual gearbox. For some reason it just feels so much easier <laughs> using the automatic on, at Monza. I probably need to start working on my downshifts. Just carrying more speed, definitely into turn one. And just seem to carry much more speed through the last corner there. Using the automatic gearbox. So down to 17 degrees. Uh, much better, much better entrance and exit turn one. Definitely hit more of the braking zone. Not 
I must have nailed that corner when I got it right. But you can see the AI are quite a long way off, nearly 10 seconds away now. So we're starting to see the tyres come into their window now, 28.2. So again it just dropped down to second gear there, but still a slightly better lap, 28.5, oh 48.5 front tyre is getting a tiny bit cold lovely corner that just losing speed on the exit there a bit deep definitely try and use as much of them curves as you can really So you see the lap times are getting about a tenth quicker, I would have said, for each time you're going around the circuit now. So I'm not particularly driving the lap any faster, the car's getting physically quicker with the different changes in the air elements, 15 degrees now. I'm still just trying to set a fast lap every lap. It feels like this. Uh, whoa! Left that braking zone a little bit too late. But you can see the effects each lap as they were getting quicker and quicker, <coughs> as the air is getting denser. The engine's just able to produce more power. Oh, don't ever try and don't ever touch that inside curb, especially through the braking zone. You just overshoot your braking point. Definitely a curb not to touch. So this lap sort of scraps really. And then try not to clip that one either. It has a tendency to spin you around, and you end up on the inside barrier. Like I was saying, the definitely want to be aiming for 28 degrees uh, 28 psi and using this inside curve here just to drag you around and don't don't exit like that so that rear tire just falling outside the window really 27.8 would be as low as we want it to go really so then you're using the, the whole tyre patch the contact patch at its best so let's try again and see if we can beat this 148.3 might be a tiny bit early That's 
not bad. We're starting to lose the front tyres. Oh, a little sideways coming out of there. So pretty much on a par really with our fastest lap. So let's see if we've got any more acceleration from the engine. <clears throat> Not really. So down to 13 degrees track temperature. But you see the front two tyres are slightly underinflated now. Slightly better entrance, not as good an exit. Some people don't particularly enjoy driving the night sections. Oh, it is much harder to be accurate. <laughs> nearly lost it that's definitely evident in that lap time so you can see them falling outside the window now the uh, tyres just starting to lose that internal bar. Probably very hard to hit a 147 now uh, with the initial tyre, the tyre degradation, <coughs> that newness around uh, uh, yeah, 2.9 of tread. Just start another capture. I'll just carry on my capture there. Capture card just ran out for a second. And get this one finished. Much better exit. and then stuffed up that corner. <laughs> so definitely made a difference the entrance to that last corner uh, where I picked up a lot more exit speed. You can certainly tell when you don't pick up that inside curb how much it affects the exit and all that exits carried out onto this straight is one of the most important corners.
any corner that leads onto a long straight is a really important corner. So we never actually managed to hit a 147 then and a 148.3 being the fastest lap. You've got to remember um, a lot of it comes down to uh, tyre wear as well. So if we go back um, we've got to wait for everyone to finish the race but it really would be nice to just click on these and then um, just be able to have a look at your lap times to be honest but certainly something that's missing from the game and it was talked about um, regarding RS Dash and the fact that um, our, the people that create RS Dash um, haven't got the opportunity really to add it um, because the embedded uh, code that runs the RS Dash isn't actually in the console version at the moment so that they, they have said that as soon as there's something available for them to um, use the code they will add it to RS Dash definitely but that's obviously something we're waiting for from the developers along with all the other um, issues within the game uh, but predominantly this is just about the tyre pressures and the, the track temperatures and the differences that it has on the car's performance I see they're just uh, winning the race let's get on with it I do like that I do like seeing that but let's uh, it's the some of the data is worth looking at at the end of the race it's definitely down to the tyre degradation like I said as soon as you go below 2.92 that's when the best life of the tyre is gone really and definitely something to work on if you look at the tyre pressures obviously you can see the front right tyre which is barely getting used and the rear left tyre that's um, definitely wearing on that inside tyre probably which could do with just reducing the uh, cambers slightly at the rear just to try and reduce some of that tyre wear and get more even even wear across the tread and then um, maybe even on the front track front tire as well but that's something you can look at in your setups but yeah i hope you've enjoyed the video we found that it's uh, been an informative one um hopefully it will benefit your um setups when you come to adjust your tire pressures and just give you something to think about um, when you're running in different um, track temperature conditions think about whether you uh, trans transversing from day to night or night to day which is going to be the longest section uh, you're going to run the tyres in to try and set them up for their longest stint in that sort of track temperature but yeah oh we've enjoyed the video uh, if you found it useful please like and share it uh, hit the subscribe button and share the video um, thanks for watching as always ciao for now if you've got any questions as well just pop them in the um, description and again people using force feedback if you've got a setup that works for you please leave a link or leave um, a description of your setup in the uh, description and hopefully it will help other people with different wheels and pedals so yeah thanks for watching Ciao for now.